if you have something that looks like a negative 2x minus an 8 is less than a negative 12, all right, they're going to ask you to do two things probably. They're going to ask you to solve it and they're going to ask you to graph it. All right, yesterday we graphed with opening, or not yesterday, two days ago, we graphed with open and closed dots. We also graphed with the square brackets and curvy brackets. All right, the, what, the 12 questions that we did at the beginning of class was the open and closed dots. I didn't put the square bracket and curvy bracket on there since that was kind of new. All right, so on this, this is a two-step equation. Clayton, what's the first thing I'm going to do to both sides? I don't want to divide first because this is a two-step equation. So when I do a two-step equation, I always have to add or subtract first. So I'm going to add 8 to both sides. So I'm going to add 8 there. I'm going to add 8 right there. Okay. This works just like a two-step equation. So that negative 2x comes down. And the only difference is instead of having an equal sign, I have a less than sign. All right. Then I'm going to do this over here. Negative 12 and 8 is going to give me a negative 4. Okay, Griffin, what am I going to do now? Not going to multiply them together because this is negative 2 times x. What's the opposite of multiplying? Division. Division. So I'm going to divide by a negative 2 and divide by a negative 2. All right, now, do I need to flip the inequality? Braden? Yeah. Yep, got to flip the inequality. So I'm going to go ahead and write the x down. I'm going to go ahead and flip it. All right, dividing like signs, it's going to be a positive 2. All right, you have to be able to get that part right before you can get the graph right. All right, it's solve the equation and then graph it. All right, now we are going to graph it with an open dot and with our square and curvy brackets. All right, 2 is a pretty small number. I would still put 2 in the middle of my number line if I was going to do it. All right, I would put a 3 on the right-hand side. I would put a 1 on the left-hand side. Okay, open or close dot. Grady, open or close dot. Open dot. Okay, open dot on two because of the greater than sign. All right, which way am I going to shade? Dallas, which way am I shading? Right. To the right. Okay, so then we shade to the right. And that's what it looked like. And that's what it looked like on the 12 questions that we had done at the beginning of class. All right, but. Two days ago, I also showed you another way, kind of leaning towards that interval notation. All right, when it was an open dot, we could also use a curvy bracket. And I'm going to make the curve go the way I'm going to shade. So curvy bracket going this way, that's the exact same thing. All right, now let's even go one step farther. All right, there is this thing called interval notation. If I can draw something on a number line like this, this is telling me where the answers to this inequality lie. All of these numbers over here make this inequality true. All right, so there is something literally called interval notation. I can represent this answer by looking at this number line and knowing that what? As I go to the right on a number line, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, what? It goes all the way to infinity, right? Because the number line goes forever and ever and ever and ever. So I can take the 2, because that's part of my answer, and I can put the infinity, since I've shaded all the way down forever and ever and ever to the right, all right? Curvy bracket on 2, always a curvy bracket around infinity. So that answer of x is greater than 2 can also be written in interval notation with two curvy brackets around the 2 and the infinity. This would be the corresponding number line. This is the corresponding number line there. So everything there is equivalent and the same. And that interval notation is new. It's what you've not seen. Okay. The next time we do questions uh, on the, you know, like the multiple choice questions at the beginning of the class, instead of having the open and closed dots, I will probably have the curvy and square brackets. Okay. All right. So let's do another one of these. All right, the pretty much everything in Math Excel is going to be solve it and then graph it. Okay, so we're going to take a look at something like maybe a 2x plus a 4 is less than a negative 14. All right, again, it's probably going to tell you to solve and graph. 
and we're going to do both number lines with open dot close dot curvy and square. Actually, let's make this less than or equal to. And we're also going to do the interval notation. All right, it's a two-step equation. All right, Noah, what am I going to do to both sides first? Yep, we're going to subtract 4 and subtract 4. So the 4s are going to go away. All right, it's going to be just like a two-step equation, except I have the inequality symbol. So the 2x is going to come down. I'll bring down the less than or equal to negative 14 and negative 4 is like a negative 18. All right, I'm going to then do what to the next step? Abby, what am I going to do in the next step? I don't flip it, all right? Am I going to multiply or divide by the 2? Yep, I'm going to divide by the 2, and I'm not going to flip it because the 2 is positive, so I'm just going to keep that inequality symbol. I'll have x is less than or equal to, and then when I divide there, I get a negative 9. All right, so that's an answer right there, okay? When I do, I'm going to do my first number line with an open dot. Whatever number is right there. Doesn't matter how big it is or how small it is, always put that number in the middle of your number line. All right, put one number on both sides, okay? So to the right, Layla, what number goes to the right? Go the other way. Yep, negative 8 over here and negative 10 over here, okay? What kind of dot on the negative 9? Clayton, what kind of dot on the negative 9? I got the equal to part. So closed? Yeah, closed. So we're going to do a closed dot. All right, now this says x is less than or equal to negative 9. All right, Rain, which way am I going to shade? Am I going to shade to the left or am I going to shade to the right? Where are the numbers that are smaller than negative 9? Yeah, to the left. Okay, so we're shading to the left. All right, so that's what the number line looks like with open and closed dots. Okay, you draw it again. Put the numbers in the exact same spot. What kind of bracket do I need on the negative 9? Is it going to be curvy or square? Carter, is it going to be curvy or square? It's going to be square. And since I already know I shade to the left, I'm going to make my square bracket kind of go to the left. And then everything gets shaded to the left. All right, then if I asked you to write the answer in interval notation, all right, now <clears throat> we're going to look at this number line. We're going to have a square bracket on here. If I have positive infinity down here, what's down here on the left-hand side of the number line? <clears throat> Negative infinity. All right, I am going to look at this number line and I'm going to write the things down left to right. So the first thing I'm going to write down, since I shaded all the way to negative infinity, I'm going to write down negative infinity. Infinities always get curvy brackets. Always. Negative infinity, positive infinity. I always put a curvy bracket by it. All right, then I'm going to put the main 9, the main number, negative 9, then I'm going to do square brackets. Yes, question. Okay. You read this number line left to right. We read a book left to right. You're going to go left to right. Curvy bracket, square bracket. Negative 9 goes there. Negative infinity goes there. All right. This in interval notation means the exact same thing as this written with an inequality symbol. This is saying x is less than or equal to negative 9. This is saying the exact same thing. All right. So definitely new stuff. All right.